Yeah, I know. We were just, I'm sorry. We were just, uh, oh, okay. we were just talking. I'm, we were going to go ahead and record this, this live event. Um, and I was just talking to Dr. Rawl really quickly before we started. Um, so we'll, we'll give it another, what, minute or whatever. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce Dr. Rawl and we'll get started. All right. Okay, everyone, so it's 11 o'clock officially now. I'm going to mute everyone just so that we won't have any noise interference. All right, so it's my pleasure today to uh, introduce our esteemed faculty member, Dr. Arnie Raw. Uh, he's going to be giving us a seminar on route distance conformal mapping in their applications. Uh, so just before we start, uh, just a, a quick background on Dr. Raw. Uh, he joined Augusta University in 2012. Prior to this, he has teaching and research experience at Indian uh, Statistical Institute, University of Oxford, Indian Institute of Science, in the University of Gulf. Um, until 2012, he held permanent faculty position at Indian Statistical Institute, Calcutta. Uh, earlier, he has won the Heiwa Nakajima Award, which is uh, in Japan, and the DST Fast Track Young Scientist Fellowship in Mathematical Sciences, which is in New Delhi. Dr. Rao jointly um, with Dr. James Carey, who's at UC Davis, UC Berkeley, has proved a fundamental result in stationary population models. Uh, Dr. Rawls' work has also featured, was also featured as news in the Math Digest of the American Mathematical Society. Dr. Raw worked on, as a consultant for the World Bank and other international agencies um, and has contributed for policies and epidemics such as AIDS, the avian influenza, uh, swine flu, and more recently, COVID-19. Um, so if you, even if you go to our departmental website, you, you can see a recent article that he, uh, that we just put up there. Uh, he's been a very, very strong force behind modeling the COVID-19 pandemic um, this year. Uh, so just give me a, a warm welcome uh, and, and, and our esteemed faculty member and welcoming Dr. Arnie Raw. Uh, Let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, thank you I'm so much. Stop sharing. I'm sorry. I'll stop sharing. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So, Dr. Rob, I'll, I'll, I'll pass it up to you now. Yeah, you. sure. I still see your face. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm turning it off right now. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. There we go. Good. Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, very good morning to all. I want to thank uh, Justin for a, a very nice introduction. I thought, you know, as a colleague, I don't need uh, among our, ourselves, but uh, they're very kind of you, Justin, to introduce me. And I'm really honored to give this seminar, uh, part of the DPHS seminar. And uh, I've been working on the epidemics, especially the COVID for last uh, eight months, as Justin correctly mentioned. And this is my first webinar or the first seminar since the COVID started, which is on non-COVID. I gave about uh, nine webinars until uh, August from the month of from May to August about uh, during the summers, all around the COVID uh, in the, within the US various universities, uh, government, and then the agencies and then the outside US. But then the this particular uh, the, the seminar or the webinar, the purpose of that uh, when I mentioned to Justin that this is not related to the, the population health topic. And then since he's the chair of the seminar committee and our doctor also, the Dr. Justin, Justin, Justin Moore, Dr. Justin Moore, and then the uh, Dr. Yang Shi, both of the organizers. So I asked them, is this a right topic or would you mind me to, would you like me to change? So 
they were very kind to go ahead and ask me to say that you know you go ahead and uh, present this particular topic which is a uh, uh, more theoretical and then uh, has a hardly anything to do with the population uh, health sciences but then uh, so i appreciate them for giving me opportunity to present this new results uh, and then also the historically this particular talk uh, has a lot of relevance for today's date is september 11th because september 10th yesterday uh, the raw distance uh, cr raw uh, he's a living legend of uh, statistics in the world celebrated he celebrated his 100th birth uh, birthday yesterday so he completed 100 by yesterday in buffalo he lives in buffalo and uh, i have been uh, directly working with him for last uh, 5 to 6 years uh, in the joint editing the handbook of statistics which is one of the prestigious uh, book series uh, from elsevier which is there for last 40 years and uh, it's a great honor to working to be working with him and american statistical association asa their uh, news bulletin in the uh, release this month september issue they have uh, uh, they have actually brought in a very nice article on uh, professor c r rao on his centenary written by someone else and uh, an august issue of the significance which is jointly by the american statistical association and the royal statistical society they also together brought a uh, issue in the significance which is a magazine by the, these two organizations in the august issue uh, where you know they also brought a issue of a nice article on the professor c r rao where i was also one of the co author along with the other uh, statisticians so given this background you know this is the uh, so i i wanted to you know this particular talk related to the raw distance is because of the c r rao's stature and uh, according to bradley efron who is renowned the bootstrap inventor c r rao will be you know the will be among all time five great great statisticians along with the uh, carl pearson uh, fisher and uh, among others he is all time five great statisticians according to the bradley afron and then uh, american statistical association mentioned him as a living legend of uh, statistics so and then also this particular talk has a, a second part other than raw distance uh, conformality so uh, this is that particular aspect of my talk would be a sequel to my last year's talk i gave at the somerville campus in the math department that was on the really on the white board in white board really presenting in the so that particular talk related to the complex analysis so i proved a theorem uh, in the, on the board you know there the proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra uh, that's where you know the last fall i gave the talk there so that particular part of that can be treated as a sequel to that particular content but it's not the same content sequel so as we move on uh, you will see the all these uh, these things in the during the talk and then uh, the same uh, the, the similar content i will be presenting i have received invitation to present at the various uh, linear algebra meetings this year um, so i'll be uh, more or less presenting the same talk i mean the uh, same content i mean uh, conformality and the raw distance and now coming to the actual uh, content organization of the talk I'll just, i will start sharing the slides yeah this is a raw distance conformal mapping and their applications and then yeah feel free to stop me because you know i'll be happy to if anything uh, within the seminar you want me to be during the slide feel free to stop me to uh, this thing you know i if there you know uh, if there is a, there anything i need to i can clarify during the talk and the organization of the talk if we see that i'm going to first start with the the raw distance a little bit of background on that and then the conformal mapping and then i will uh, discuss about the little bit about application overview of the applications so the the main article uh, the raw distance or the you know, raw kramer raw inequality all, all the famous results due to cr rao uh, started you know started recognizing uh, the world started recognizing from this particular article published uh, in 1945 so as someone yesterday in his centenary celebrations uh, someone mentioned that you know this you know this also could be treated 2020 can be treated as a platinum jubilee of uh, kramer rao inequality 
and this particular article uh, is i think a ninth or tenth article of cr rao i mean this is not the first article but ninth or tenth article of cr rao uh, this is at the age of 25 he published this article and this is been communicated by rc bose another stalwart uh, statistician from india and then later he used to, he worked at uh, north carolina chapel hill for i think he retired from there so the this particular article communicated uh, and then as uh, uh, other uh, distinguished statisticians also mentioned you know this changed this particular topic uh, paper uh, introduced the concept of uh, information geometry this is actually the birth of information geometry you would see in the others others uh, i mean other people's uh, uh, other statisticians comments as well so the article in significance you know written by efron amari rubin and myself and cox uh, dr cox we all together jointly published this article just came up in the month uh, august month uh, significance that says that you know the the you know that describes about this particular article i mentioned and they they are all associations with uh, cr rao how is book linear statistical inference uh, the famous book actually that is the first uh, um, uh, book on statistics that according to dr cox uh, it is the first mammoth book on statistics which has comprising all the developments until that day so the quotes if you see that the uh, according to efron in that article he mentioned that rao really was a fisher student so bradley efron also wrote recollections about you know how he was so excited when he saw the book uh, uh, someone kept it on the desks of stanford university when he was a graduate student someone kept uh, that book i mean uh, in the in the students room when he saw he was so excited uh, to see the second edition of the book when he was a student uh, all the recollections about the kramer rao and equality all that and then the amari uh, sichin amari i mean during my lectures in the during the, this i mean the, my students in within the agastya university in the graduate courses i teach i also although not part of any of the syllabuses i also describe about the geodesic distances and the amari's contribution out of the syllabus you know sometime i teach uh, extra classes so i describe i also discuss so they know the my students also know this name uh, sichin amari the geodesic uh, all these things so he revolutionized the idea of uh, information geometry so he says that uh, the cr rao is the godfather of japanese statisticians too and then uh, uh, don rubin uh, donald rubin professor rubin he mentioned that you know the jewel of statistics he was saying it is art in his uh, comments in that article i mentioned uh, in significance he was saying about uh, how the john tukey who was uh, whose former colleagues were john newman and uh, also the einstein at uh, princeton so he was uh, john tukey you know he know he was working parallelly at some time some point of time and the same john tukey mentioned about cr rao cr rao was about 10 year junior to john tukey so he predicted that you know he would be the jewel of statistics one day when uh, cr rao was very young so so don rubin was saying how john tukey was uh, correct about uh, cr rao you know when he met in 1950s or 60s sometime so that recollections and then you know they also put if these are all quotation chosen by the editor of the significance is not uh, we never we based on the content what we wrote and then uh, i also described about the modern day applications of uh, raw distance and then other things and then uh, david cox mentioned about professor cox mentioned about you know the how he you know he was almost 5 to 6 years junior to cr rao by age he's 95 this year he turned uh, 96 so uh, professor cox also recollected you know he came to know about uh, know about the name of cr rao when uh, uh, cox was student and then uh, and then uh, how you know that name uh, reached him and then but he met uh, several years after that first heard his name of cr rao re- working with fisher a very brilliant guy a brilliant student of uh, fisher arrived in england that sort of thing news about so he, he mentioned his recollections and there other nice article i think this is good for the students to read especially you know what exactly the kramer rao inequality and the rao distance that also came up in the same issue of the significance in the last month issue you know, they wrote a very nice article in a non technical way angelo plasino and uh, angelo ricardo plasino both were uh, well known in information geometry and theoretical physics so they wrote article on the rao distance and the kramer rao inequality so they also mentioned in 1945 that that article i mentioned at the first slide or second slide that uh, cr rao broke the ground with the manuscript that introduced the inequality relations which sets a limit on accuracy attainable in the estimation of parameters characterizing the prob- characterizing probability density so that's what they uh, in their uh, the article and then they mentioned also they you know the distance the probability distance and the densities 
whatever the that uh, you know the, the distance is all that very famous you know because uh, the same time you know when uh, C R Rao was the year C R Rao was born 1920 the same year Professor Mahalana Bhis you know he the distance Mahalana Bhis distance that also published in the same year so 1920 in a way has a very big uh, significance in statistics because the Mahalana Bhis distance uh, published in the same year the same year Rao was born. Uh, I mean, both, and then later the story, you know, how uh, Professor Mahalana Bhis uh, uh, nurtured uh, Indian Statistical Institute. He hired uh, Rao at the age of 28 as a full professor. And then uh, the Rao distance, although we are not talking about the populations, but Rao distance itself was construction based on the, the populations, you know, the, about the anthropological data, the measures of the population, various things within the human populations, and the, 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 the bone densities, the length between the nose and the ear, all these things, you know. So they did very much on the anthropological human population data, you know, that particular results came up those days, you know, the Mahalanabis distance, even before the Mahalanabis distance, Helling their distance about 1907. And then also other things also came up, you know, that, so that, that, that was the period, you know, the golden age of statistics, you know, the evol evolution of the statistical methods and Kolmograph one side publishing on the axiomatic approaches, which I just described to my students in this, my class. So all these things were, you know, 19, 1930 to 1900, that 30, 40 years, you know, the major developments of statistics was occurring. And then the, you know, the, you know, the feature information in the, in conjunction, they also mentioned Plastino and Plastino. Fisher uh, information in conjunction with the Kramer Rao inequality, Rao distance, all are important tools. So, this is also the mention in their article. So, coming to now the, actually the technicalities of the talk, uh, the, these two, uh, two inequalities, I will start with the two major inequalities. Suppose you consider two convergent uh, you know, series, AN and BN, such that AN, summation of AN, I mean, series AN greater than or equal to series BN. Then we know that this particular uh, condition may allows us to put that, you know, allows us to bring a relation, bring an inequality that is sigma an log bn by an less than or equal to zero. So a lot of information is preserved in this inequality. I mean, they look very, uh, they, they are basically, they have nothing to do with the statistics there, but information, you know, the information inequalities, these inequality, this in particular inequality can be treated like it can be treated, can be called a information inequality. Because the properties of uh, A and B N based on the small uh, based on the small condition that is you know the, the which is greater than this particular series is greater than that particular sequence series A N and B N then we can deduce that sigma A N log B N by A N is less than or equal to zero and then also further students can verify that A N less than or equal to one for all n and bn less than or equal to one for all n, then twice the summation, twice the sig summation sigma an log an by bn, which is greater than or equal to an multiplied by an minus bn square. That you can verify based on this particular inequality if a and bn are less than or equal to one. So that, that indicates what the information, that means this, the behavior of the sequence, the terms of the sequence, the values which the particular uh, the, the terms will take that determines a lot of information on the future events, future events. So this is this particular inequality uh, and then similar inequality also, you know, in a continuous form, you know, if you take two non-negative integrable functions with the measure, I mean, those who have not been I mean, my students, those in uh, three, four years back, our graduate students, I in the summer, I taught a course uh, Measuring integration, this is not part of the curriculum, but then uh, there's part of research, uh, research, some uh, research course. I don't remember what was the course. Uh, so I special inter just for the out of students' interest, I taught about the measure. So those who don't know, just for treat that as a random variable. Uh, so then uh, the similar inequality we can de deduce in integral over f log f by g. So this is the period, you know, this inequality was also there in the, that time of the period when the and uh, the Fisher and all these, you know, 1920s, you know, the, and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So uncertainty term, you know, how much uncertainty we can bear in the future based on the small observations, what we have. Even the Poincare, you know, the dynamical system introduced. And we know that, you know, the anything, the initial conditions, whatever there, if the differential equation in the long term behavior of the differential equation need not, uh, I mean, the, the lot of uncertainty can be generated because of the initial conditions. So that even the COVID also, you know, when the several uh, 
the interviews in the various media other place also they, they asked me about accuracy of my know my own modeling results i mentioned the same thing you know the uncertainty the level of uncertainty is very very important uh, that's actually the quantum physics aspect uncertainty was used in the quantum physics mostly and then the cr law using the riemannian manifolds all that you know uh, which is different than the fisher's fisherian you know thought they that particular deviation he brought to the statistics was using the riemannian manifolds and then he brought the kramer law inequality so this inequality is played a bigger role you know this particular inequality or these previous and these are these kind of inequalities can be called as a information inequalities of information and then fisher information you know the same time you know the fisher information uh, f theta if we do not have by f theta then the this particular f theta we can i mean the the derivation you know the students of my lecture they know it but then most of the students they know so we don't have to worry but then the the fisher information if f if you do not have a script f then uh, this can be written as you know the expectation of the do log f by do theta where f is the probability density and then a random variable could be generated or it could be a general random variable or a vector value either it could be vector or it could be general random variable on a general space should be any space with a, some uh, distances are there the well defined distances and with a finite measure you will have finite measure then you know that sort of things soon can be derived and you can find for example cox and amari in various books also you can find the uh, the more details about the um, uh, this fisher information and then if uh, you know the we also know that you know if f dot theta is assumed to be differentiable with respect to theta then we can write the the partial derivative of the integral equal to integral of the partial derivative of the density so this is this is possible because of the the condition on the measurable set we we introduce and then so what do we mean in general what do we mean with information on an unknown parameter theta until the you know the information criteria all that were not there before the fisher and they introduced the fisher information and then the, the improved by the raw with the kramer raw bound and then the how the kramer kramer raw bound all these things so in general the information we mean here is how much information like that information in a particle if there is a particle movement in a there or if there is a movement of something or genetic code how much information you know the random variable you collect on the how much information that will there so how much uncertainty uncertainty regarding the unknown value of theta is reduced as a consequence of observation whatever the information you observe based on the random variable the uncertainty regarding the unknown value of the parameter that's what we mean by information here and various people have various interpretations so i uh, prefer from the in interpretation given by rao and then the the situation you know the random variable will have a maximum information arises with a unique uh, i mean maximum information arises if there is a unique observation on the with probability one only unique observation is there then you see the random variable will have a maximum information Be because there is no other that means that uncertainty is reduced and then the same as i mentioned the hellinger distance you know hellinger distance also uh, played at same time a major role in 1907 Hellinger came up with this very interesting uh, uh, distance. Uh, so you call Hellinger distance. If uh, f, you know, these things are denote you know, the probability densities, then uh, the Hellinger distance is can be uh, can be constructed as cos inverse of integral f x theta one f x theta two, where they are the two. I mean, the densities for random variable x with two set of parameters theta one and theta two, but we use the measure. so several several uh, books you know several uh, articles you can see on the hellinger distance application of the hellinger distance in various uh, situations so especially you know see the linsays or shin basu sakkar or stirman stirman and all these things you know the you will see this uh, details about the hellinger distance at the same time you know they are related you know the the development of the um, uh, you know the the fisher information and then the how the fisher information you'll see that little bit variation suppose we take instead of theta 1 theta 2 if theta 2 is considered as theta 1 plus delta theta 1 and then uh, we can expand f of x theta 2 by taylor series you know the previous uh, slide f of x theta 2 as a taylor expansion where you consider theta 2 as a theta 2 as a theta 1 plus delta theta 1 then the hellinger distance we can write the cos inverse of f theta 1 and 1 minus 1 by 8 derivative of uh, f with theta 1 and f theta 1 so obviously see that from looking at that you know that is related to the some the the terms are related associated with the fisher information 
So, you know, one can immediately see that this, uh, this particular expression of Hellinger can be written as a cos inverse of 1 minus 1 by 8, Fisher information theta 1, delta theta 1 square. See, so that uh, the Helling additions, you know, that uh, 1907, I mean, there are many, many things came up at the same time, the, you know, the, the distance, although the Euclidean distance is there, norm very much is there, and then the Mahalan distance came 1920, and the Patajari bonds came up in the, so the distance was, you know, the statisticians were very much worried about the distances, information, how much random variable was carrying the information, how much data to be collected, because you know that uh, that article, you know the, the 1945 and later articles of uh, C R Rao. I mean, especially not 1945 article. There is no population mentioned. Uh, I mean, the, about the real data. But later articles, you'll see that you know he mentioned about the bones and the skulls of the data. I mean, the anthropological data, all that. So there also you see that how this they were worried about the distances there and the, the bones. All these were there. So you see that uh, the Hilling additions also can be associated with the with the Fisher information term. Then further properties of Helling additions, if you see that, Helling additions increases with the increase in the value of theta one. So the distance increases. And then the, the this is a measure, you know, Helling additions can be used as a measure of sensitivity of the random variable with respect to if infinitesimal change in the value of the parameter. That's why you can say delta two equal delta one plus delta, I mean, theta one plus delta theta one. So it's a further properties of the Helling additions. And then coming to the, uh, the this, uh, in the improvement of that, you know, then the, I mean, uh, then the using of all these things, for example, see that uh, CRR considered, you know, it's a multivariate uh, situation where multi-parameter situation with theta one, theta two, uh, uh, et cetera, and delta theta, uh, theta one plus delta theta one, theta, theta two plus delta theta two, et cetera. So in that, you know, several uh, parameter case. And then uh, he, he he thought that, you know, they, under the Riemann, this is where the, you know, Riemannian metric, uh, Riemannian, uh, Manifold within the Riemannian manifold, he brought the distance which he called a quadratic differential metric, the double summation Fij, which is again Fisher metric, delta theta i, delta theta j. So this part, this particular distance, you know, uh, this revolutionized the you know, the modern uh, the statistics in the in 1962 article, and then the details about the things can be seen in the P. Choudhury and uh, Maybank and Wu and Srivastava, you know, that are they. I mean, many, many other hundreds of articles are there. Uh, you'll see in the math sign net. But then uh, these articles, you know, I personally liked it. You know, I mean, I, I have read it, these articles, you know, the, along with many other. I see that they describe the, uh, the beautiful properties of the raw distance and how this, you know, various, uh, because, you know, raw distance also use the official information. All the properties of the official information are, in, are uh, just incorporated within the raw distance there. And then in the, with this uh, the background, you know, what did we link? You know, the uh, because the raw distance and then the uh, the previous slides, you know, the Hellinger, all these things, uh, and then the Fisher information all together, they carry a lot of information uh, about the random variables, about the parameters, what is the minimum information needed, minimum information to be collected, but they within the bigger space. But then the, the the improvisation of that, you know, because the, in the curvature, when the you know when you consider in the higher dimension, the geometry here comes into the picture because of the uh, in a in a higher dimensional space. Imagine that you know you have a at least R three in a sphere, and then you within the sphere you you I mean there is a, some function which you know the values taken with you know the you plot at a uh, continuous function within a sphere, you know within the you know the the solid sphere, not a hollow sphere. And then you see that that particular values which pass through that, you know, it's like a particle movement in that. So the geometry plays a bigger role. Now they con combining with the geometry, the angles, how the angles between the, you know, the between certain between the certain curves which are intersect, which intersect each other, based on the uh, based on the the tangent lines. So that's what the the development conformality which I introduced into the the raw distance. And because of the COVID, you know, all these things we got delayed. Uh, the development, although I've been working for some time, but now in the COVID, uh, we have to lost everyone. Have to lost most of us, uh, as Dr. Moore mentioned. You know, he himself uh, uh, done a lot, lot of work on the COVID. Uh, amazing kind of work uh, Dr. Moore has done. 
uh, on the COVID especially brought new results into the new data analysis and the new uh, things. So we, similarly, you know, I also lost various, a uh, lot, lot of my time into the, the COVID and then uh, we are happy that, you know, we are able to bring good results. Now coming to the back, you know, this we so I resumed again back during the summer. Um, and then if you see that the two, if you take uh, and within the conformer mapping and the raw distance that linkage, I will explain you here. If you take two and two uh, complex numbers, Z1, Z2, uh, this is where I mentioned about the connectivity between my talk last fall that I gave during the Somerville, in the Somerville campus during the last fall. So if you take two uh, complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, that belongs to uh, when there's even written the complex numbers, the argument of Z1, Z2, I mean, this is a well-known result, an argument of Z1 plus argument of Z2 and 2 pi n Z1, Z2. That's a, a way, you know, the uh, Z1, Z2 complex numbers. We all know that, you know, the uh, uh, complex numbers Z can be written as X plus I, Y, X and Y are real numbers. And then the X equal to R cos theta, uh, and then y equal to r sin theta, you know, the e power uh, i theta, the Euclidean, you know, Euclid wrote that kind of form, you know. And then we all know that, you know, the if you write x equal to r cos theta, um, and the x equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sin theta, then obviously, you know, the mod x that, you know, the that can be written as mod z cos theta and mod z sin theta. So that means the, the the unique value is called the principal argument. That's what we write, arg, arg. Arg. Just we all, you all know that, but a quick recap. So the n z1 z2, this is very important because you know n z1 z2 equal to minus one within that range, the three kind of ranges minus one, zero, or one. And so arc z1 two complex numbers can be written as angle between the z1 and uh, angle at z1 z2 and then two pi n z1 z2. So if we take an analytic function, um, uh, I mean so suddenly you know we went to the new new aspect here, but I will link up these two later. The one previous in the, the raw distance there. So you'll see that you know if you consider analytic function, that is, you know, we call it a complex analysis. Analytic means which is differentiable, but you know, which has higher properties, more other properties, you know. At when you have to have a disk around all the points are in the near neighborhood are has to be differentiable. That's called a, uh, this thing, for example, uh, mod z mod z square is uh, uh, differentiable, but it is not. Uh, Holomorphic, or it's not analytic at z equal to zero, but uh, f z equal to z f z equal to z square is analytic. There's two examples, you know. Then you know the line segments. If we f is f will map two line segments intersecting at a point uh, into two curves intersecting at f z belongs to c. And then if uh, f dash c not equal to zero, that means if you take the derivative at c not equal to zero, then the intersection. Then this is important. Uh, then the angle at the intersection given at the line segment is same as the angle at the intersection of the tangent lines. So this is the uh, result. This is uh, nothing to do with uh, this. Thing. This is all well-known result in the, all the textbooks you will see. Then if you consider a path, you know, uh, a comma b to r power n, that is a n-dimensional uh, uh, space, then the, uh, if, if you take a you know, real value, vector valued or vector valued function, which is continuous on a compact interval, Compact means here, it is closed and bounded. Uh, so compact interval, A comma B subset of R. And then you see gamma maps, gamma maps, A comma B to gamma T. This gamma T is in the R power N. So this is a, this is on the, re, this is a real, this is a real line, and on the A comma B on the real line. So gamma maps, you know, the so higher, we're taking, so, I mean, you're going to the higher dimension, you know, the mapping, you know. So that's uh, called a, and then this gamma is called a path. Gamma is called a path of the this thing. And similarly, the, the functional values gamma, gamma itself is called a path, but the functional values of gamma that trace out set of points, you know, within the Rn is called the graph. This is also the path and the graph. This, so these are the two things, uh, uh, just focus on the path and the graph. So that's why you take a now consider two graphs, G1, G2, two graphs corresponding to two smooth paths, gamma, gamma two. Smooth means they're continuous here. So gamma, gamma, gamma one, gamma two are the complex valued function because on the, we took a higher dimension there, complex valued function. And then suppose gamma one is from eight, eight, A1, B1 with an interval A1, B1 and gamma two is from A2, B2. Two intervals, two intervals on the real line. And then they pick up a point T1 within the interval A1, comma B1, pick up a point T2, A2, comma B2. And then gamma of T1 equal to gamma of T2 equal to C. At some, that's it. Uh, the common point they see. Then 
if gamma uh, the derivative is not equal to zero, that's important because as we saw in the other slide, you know, if dash c not equal to zero, then only the tangent lines, the intersection, uh, intersector curve, the line segments, angle at the line segments, intersector angle at the tangents. So angle from G1, G2, that's graph at C, we can write down as the arguments. That is G1 to G2. Angle from two graphs can be the difference between the angles. Uh, it's an argument, gamma to dash, that's an angle, an argument of the this thing. So that's the G1 to G2, like, you know, in the high school geometry also we do that, you know, the angle, if you have a two lines, we draw that, you know, we take the trace out and then we take the difference between the angles. So now I assume that since F dash is not equal to zero, then the disk around C, that means, you know, imagine the neighborhood around C that you call a BC or a ball C on which F is one to one. So now what happens is since F is one to one, when is a continue, we all know that continuous function maps a particular region, you know, if you this thing, the one to them, all the entire neighborhood it maps. That's the beauty of a continuous function. So hence f of f completely maps f of gamma t1, gamma 1 t1, f of gamma 2 t2. That also, they're all, you know, completely maps. And then these functions, you know, they describe arcs, you know, whenever, ma after mapping, whatever done you saw in the map, they are known as the graphs, you know, they are arcs in the, in the right side. So then uh, let's imagine it, that's whatever I described. In pictorially, if you see that, pictorially, if you see that, you know, you take a real line, and then uh, take the G1, G2. If G1, G2 are the two type of, you know, the, um, the, the graph generated and the C is the angle, I mean, at point C, theta is the angle, the tangent lines you draw there, then, uh, then you map them. Then you, uh, you map them and then you see that, you know, you know the, even though the, even though the, you know, the, the, the curves, you know, the map G1 map to C1, G2 map to C2, you know, two curves, but then the, the at FC, this is FC, the intersection point FC, that intersection, uh, that angle at the intersection remains the same. That's what uh, the notation I described there. So the angle at the intersection remains same under some conditions what we discussed, what we, I mean, yeah, what I discussed in the previous slide. So we'll see that these angles are preserved now. Suppose you consider U1, uh, this is very easy, you know, the only notation you need to follow. Suppose U1 T1 equal to F of C, and for C equal to gamma 1 T1, that is F of C that you considered in the previous slide, uh, you want to F of C, and then um, F of C for C gamma 1 T1, because gamma 1, you know, the mapping, mapping you saw in the previous slide, and other, other uh, diagram I showed, the gamma is mapped there on the right side. So U2 T2 equal to F of C, then you take the derivative, U dash U1 dash T1, which is equal to F dash C gamma 1 dash T1, and U2 dash T2 equal to F dash C gamma 2 dash T2 simple derivative of that and then you take the you see that you know uh, argument in the previous slide just take the argument of that and then you see that argument of u1 dash t1 equal to the argument of this one plus argument of this one you see and then the uh, 2 pi n1 you saw the theorem in the beginning you know that uh, let's say uh, fundamental theorem there in the complex numbers any two complex numbers so you we apply argument on that then you get these things and then implies that you know argument of that minus argument of that you know 2 pi n1 minus n2. So, you know, same angle, you see that the, the difference, you know, the same thing here, there, and then the same angle is preserved. So that is the beauty of the uh, this particular. Now the uh, embedding, you know, this particular same probability functions, the line segment, same probability functions. Now the, in the higher dimensional space, the angles between the curves are not considered in the raw distance there or the other things. Now, by considering that we had a higher dimensional object to preserve the same curvature, to preserve the same uh, the proportionality between the curvatures, we need to have angle preservation. Otherwise, you see that you know the the angles do get distorted in the, the photo. Even I see that when you see an ordinary photo, any two-dimensional uh, picture, you see that the depth is not covered there. Although you can imagine, if you know the figure, if you know that I that area, that particular location where you have seen the photo, where you have pictured the photo. You can imagine the depth, but those who are not seen that area, that those are not physically visited that a particular location of the photo, you would not see that, you know, you would not able to clearly imagine. So although the higher dimensional, the curvature, all they're very important, unless the angles are not preserved. And if you are applying those things for the real term uh, measurement of the um, certain objects and all these things, uh, that, you know, the angle preservation helps there. So the that that's an uh, note. So we applied this combination of these two into the information geometry, 
and uh, information geometry along with the by the way rao did not use the word information geometry initially it is due to the amari amari who popularized the word um, information geometry but then the they all i mean information ge- popularized the word information geometry but amari they all uh, acknowledge they all say that in uh, the, because of the rao's particular paper that i mean f- first time he did not use like a the you know euler euler for example i uh, work on the stationary populations uh, the euler uh, mm, famous map edition and then the recently john grant we celebrated also american statistical association royal statistical society celebrated 400 years of john grant um and then uh, they all uh, use the stationarity in their application but they never use the word stationary similarly euler never used similarly cr rao never used the word information geometry in his first paper first i mean the, that uh, 10th article which is the first for the kramer rao bound but then the amari says that's the beginning of that particular article is the beginning of the information geometry and amari used the geodesic distances all that he popularized it uh this thing so so some of my students i teach here you know i covered also those things which are of course not part of any curriculum just you know this is between the how the google maps uh, the distance between the how the objects are covered in the google maps versus the other distances so as a, that examples i cover i uh, pretty much discuss the details about the amaris work so uh, so myself and uh, steven kranz you know we have published the just article on the you know the how this information geometry and conformal mapping uh, uh, can be just came up in the self press article yeah, just i think this uh, yeah i mean a few weeks ago and then the there we described about uh, unfortunately the, you know all the appendix the theoretical appendix was removed due to the general consideration we were trying we now trying to put that all the technicalities in the online uh, requesting we will request the editor again to but then that's fine you know they they mentioned central points are very well preserved in the article there about the how this uh, higher dimensional things can be used for preserving the angles and uh, because of corona virus uh, you know the travel tourism industry really affected so the, uh, the applications you know one of the figure from this article i'll uh, show here suppose you consider the you know the you know any picture you know any uh, photo frame you know you you shot the picture and then you see that you know this is a one time shot you know you just take the shot of one one time this is a location and then uh, you know this is a, this is a real location what i'm and then uh, this is live real time you know real time the picture may be different than the when you take the photo so a b are the real time i mean the, the photo and the c d are you know in this uh, in this uh, this thing c and d are the are uh, the photo taken at a later time point i mean the the, the live live the, the live shot live shot taken Uh, at different time than the photo then you see that there's a lot, lot of structural change i mean there a lot of traffic new traffic has come in maybe some clouds have changed many things have changed there so uh, and also the night time you know if you have the night time you know the, again these things will change so and then the this particular diagram you know there is no angle but then with that about the uh, uh, real time real time um, uh, real time uh, incorporation of the data and then uh, if you see the next uh, next one you know this is also from the same uh, this thing so that means uh, you know if you have some objects in the in the tourist spots uh, and then we be in the the tourist spots you see that the uh, from the picture the the be it a two dimensional three dimensional in the, in the regular two in the regular uh, videos online videos available the angles and the curvature and then the distances may not be preserved just you know locations are preserved properly but then the angles are not preserved hence the you know the uh, you know they with uh, using the drone new technology you know that the angle preservation curvature can be uh, as you see in the part, second uh, photo you know this can be preserved and then the that would actually improve the visibility and then the re- more realistic improvement of the the technology can be you uh, these also taken from our uh, article there so this i when i propose ideas on the information geometry the the probabilistic functions and then how this kind of densities can be incorporated then that you know the peer reviewed and the reviewers also you know they were a uh, uh, bit initially um, all the very supportive you know they wanted us to give all the details we even provide finally you know that the journal articles you know that did not uh, but it's fine they were all amazed at the first draft when we submitted you know the they were thrilled in editor was completely thrilled to um, see such a nice applications of the these two combining the marriage between the information geometry and i'm going to give more theoretical talks uh, uh, end of the fall um, December, January, some linear algebra meetings and other meetings, and I received invitation. So there, would like to present more and more. Uh, I would like to present in the uh, uh, 
and in this particular aspect you know and then some realistic uh, examples also and then the in, in connection with that you know the as you know that i edit uh, jointly the with uh, professor rao uh, handbook of statistics very prestigious uh, series by elsevier the last 40 years and then the our current volume on data science just released and next volume will be on the also data science released in february all the authors are, all the other chapters are done and then now we are final stages of processing but after that you know we are going to release a new volume uh, which is on the information geometry the volume subtitled uh, information geometry along with angelo plastino myself and cr rao this will release in next fall september 2021 this book and uh, we have lined up all the authors started working from uh, last month i think from july i think the, all the authors are writing fantastic group of authors you know they have been working um, on the information geometry for uh, i think uh, at least for 20 years to 50 years of experience you know various authors of various uh, age range you know from uh, across the world already we recruited them and they have been writing these uh, chapters on various aspects of information geometry uh, especially, I forgot to mention, you know, there's a nice journal came up, the journal title also Information Geometry, whose chief editor is uh, Shinto Eguchi from, by Springer. And uh, that first, uh, first, I mentioned also to my students that in 2018, that came up, uh, that uh, journal uh, was launched. And uh, we have several uh, editors of the journal also, I mean, three, four editors of the journal also, they were uh, part of this group here. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, and that particular... Uh, uh, article that particular journal is uh, also honorary editors uh, by Efron, C.R. Rao, David Cox. There are area hundred editors of the journal, and uh, she and uh, Sichin Awari. These four are honorary editors of the journal Information Geometry. And then the we are also bringing a nice volume on the uh, Information Geometry release 2021. So, uh, so I really want to thank all of you for you know having a lot of patience and uh, the the chair of the organizing you know for permitting me to present these things uh, to all of you and uh, I was really excited excited to bring this to the attention you know attention of um, our department uh, I mean, most of the faculty they know I mean because last year also when I gave the talk in Somerville uh, several faculty members attended the uh, the talk in the campus and the half of our students also were there. So I took the liberty to present the some of the technicalities here. I'm sure they will all understand. So, uh, so any questions? Uh, I'd like to let me switch on the video. Yeah, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for the, the great presentation, Dr. Rao. Um, yeah, and, and we'll just leave the floor open for questions. How do I switch on the camera? I mean, my camera is lost as soon as I started the presentation. Yeah, just uh, stop sharing and then there you go. Yeah, so I, I have a, a very simple, dumb question. So there's no relation between you and the other famous Rao as well, right? No? No, yeah, I should have mentioned that there is no relation. <laughs> and I first time met him uh, when he was 90. Wow. First meeting with him was 90, but I, his name is well known across anyone reads 36 books anywhere in the world uh, know his name because of his uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the textbooks mention uh, you know mm -hmm. the name of Rao Bond and many a Rao Blackwell theorem. Um, so David Blackwell uh, won the National Medal of Science in 2010, and Rao won the Student National Medal of Science in 2002, and Efron won in 2005. So all the famous people they won the National Medal of Science. Eh? And uh, yeah, David Blackwell uh, visited also India. So I directly working with Rao started in 2016, but no relation, no blood relation. You should uh, have it's, a common name. it's a common name, like Kim in Korea or uh, Chen in China or John in USA, something like that. You know. Are you sure you're not related? <laughs> no. <to the> genealogy. <laughs> you know, no it's back generations back. You know, it might be coming from. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe that is that. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, that's nice talk. Thank you. Thank you. I guess no other 
questions. Now, I just want to make a comment that, um, you know, being in a biostatistics department, we don't hear much of the historical perspective of uh, statistics and uh, the big names and the uh, philosophical discussions and that sort of things. You don't hear much. Uh, you know, I came out of a stat department. This was a normal thing there. Almost every uh, seminar, people talking about these kind of things and the philosophical aspects and fighting about those things. And in those days, uh, there used to be rabid Bayesians, and uh, there's a big group of people who didn't like that, and uh, there used to be big arguments about that. They all just nothing to do with the statistical analysis per se, but just uh, you know, philosophical and uh, and uh, and you know, arguments like that. You know. But in the biostat departments, we don't tend to have, we don't tend to focus much of that. You know, uh, coming from a stat department is a very different culture, actually. I agree. I agree with you. No, that, that is absolutely right, uh, Dr. George, because you what you say is, uh, you know, that uh, the olden days they discussed, uh, they used to discuss all these things. Uh, in fact, uh, that article I mentioned in Significance, Don Rubin uh, speaks about some of those things, you know, olden days, uh, how, you know, the he says how the even though the, you know, John Tukey and Fisher, um, Neyman and Fisher, they never had a good relation, but then, uh, I mean, uh, According to Don, Don Rubin, they are a good relation. Although, mm -hmm. but then when Rao did PhD under Fisher, but they took Rao easily. You know, they never in, in, uh, they never introduced. I mean, any of their personal relation with other people uh, with their fall their students. They think those are the good things about them, and that also, yeah, you're right. I agree with you. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Do we have any other questions? I, I, you know, it was a really interesting presentation. I'm, I'm trying to give people time to formulate those ideas. We we have about five more minutes. Yeah, as Borges knows, uh, this is actually the populations. You know, that I, although not my talk did not cover, this is uh, related to the populations. You know, the measurement of the pop this particular entire thing is developed based on the the measuring the distances between the various uh, group of populations how to understand the, how far they are anthropologically, how the origin, the relation, the distance between the various skulls, I mean, the various uh, things within a skull, from the skulls, can we distinguish the people and then the, the multivariate development of the principal, how to separate certain groups, how to separate, uh, club together, join together. This is all the, um, the origin is uh, very much related uh, to the population uh, sciences. Yeah, a lot of the big time uh, statisticians and theoretical statisticians in the old days, they were really working in other fields. Fisher was a hardcore car carrying geneticist, actually. I mean, he was not a statistician to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, Rao has worked on a lot of work in the uh, public health area over his uh, very long uh, professional span of uh, career. You know? I mean, a lot of his work is uh, in a directly involved in the public health arena, actually. And he was in Pittsburgh, and I don't know if he's very active now. But um, you know, his theoretical contribution is what people know him for. You know? But he has done a lot. He has actually written books on now uh, bio uh, biostatistical applications and that's, that sort of things. You know, but he's always known for his theoretical work. You know, uh, say Haldane is a geneticist. So if you look at all the big names in the old days, uh, Tukey was more of an agricultural statistician. You know? Cox Cox also worked on the you know the carpet industries. Right. Yeah. And the student T was a beer, which is working in the beer industry, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, Dr. Rao, I have, I have a, a question regarding those, uh, the specific methodology and whether you have collaborated with people from, you know, evolutionary biology, the geological sciences, um, because, I mean, what you were saying was, is very interesting um, and, and whether you're able to, you know, use those applications within those specific disciplines and, um, yeah, so have you had that interdisciplinary approach? No, no, because the, now the angle preservation concept uh, introduced it. Now I would, I would like to you know, see that the applications, uh, because the slides already I shared with the slide before presentation, I shared with a lot of uh, evolutionary biologists. I know uh, it's in the US, in the University of Georgia, Athens campus, I know the um, ecology, in fact, uh, my own uh, collaborator, uh, uh, James, Dr. James Carey in uh, University of California, Davis. 
he himself has you know tons of experience of working with the, he himself is you know the entomologist so this uh, the i would like to now collaborate uh, on this aspect and see that you know practically i don't want to bring just for the sake of um, bring some data put some like that we can bring in many applications but to see realistically where that's called non trivial applications i like your question it's a brilliant question uh, justin thank you thank you <clears throat> Okay, I um, uh, if I mean if anyone else doesn't have any questions or follow-up responses or comments then I just like to thank you Dr. Ra for your time. Really 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 interesting research. Oh, I do have a quick comment. Okay. 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 So, uh, you discussed the the for true non-negative functions the distance measure which is uh, fx log of fx over gx in, in, integral, right? Mm -hmm. So I think in information theory or engineering, or actually uh, also uh, many statisticians refer to that as uh, the uh, callback labeler divergence measure. Uh, you mean the, the cost inverse of that, that part, that aspect? Not cost inverse, the earlier one when you review the distance measures at the beginning. Yeah, you mean the inequalities? No, you just mean, the, 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 the definition. Just a minute, I'll go to the slide. Yeah, move, move forward. Oops, back, back, way back. Way back at the beginning. Yes, uh, down the uh, next one. Yes. So that's really, um, I think, uh, people use it uh, or um, the, the uh, Kobach labeler divergence was basically uh, defined if F and G are true densities. Here, this is for general, you have two non negative integral, uh, integrable functions, right? So but basically, uh, I think at least classically, though, this measure is not really a distance per se because you have two functions. It does not satisfy the symmetry uh, property okay. and also the triangle inequality. Absolutely. Not, oh, right. Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's more general. Maybe what you, you meant was a more general uh, way of uh, calling these it. Are, that's right. These are these two. You, I agree with you, Dr. Chen. You, know, you are absolutely correct. You know, this is the. Uh, these two F and G are here. We have not, uh, when I have described these inequalities, we have not come to the um, the random variable aspects. Uh, these are mm -hmm. the general mathematical inequalities. Mm -hmm. And then F and G are yeah. two non-negative integrable functions uh, in general. Right. Then with the measure, and this is not need not be probabilistic measure also. General uh, you know, measure integration, that sort of measure. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in the mathematics, in general mathematics, uh, in the real analysis, uh, we can write that if the f minus g is the measure d mu, this is greater than zero, then mm -hmm. only when yeah, this is that true, this, right. mm -hmm. yeah, in the math, then otherwise there's an absolute value when you take it, then it's become pullback liability, that sort of relation, All right? Mm -hmm. So that becomes probabilistic. So here there are these need not be f and g, a non negative integral function, d could be just uh, with a f greater than zero, and the, the, if it's density, then you know this has to be. The integral has to be between zero and one. Mm -hmm. But here, that's yeah. beyond that, it can go. Then only the so the evolution of the distances and the inequalities. So I was a uh, two inequalities I mentioned. It. So mm -hmm. these two inequalities are the uh, sort of foundation of the information. Information they carry, like uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principles. So when that you know the in fact the, the C R Rao also in his article. Right. mentioned you know, Raymond and Manifold. So he was reading about the quantum physics where the uncertainty, interesting uncertainty is related to information. How much uncertain we are about the information we gathered. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I think yeah, the uh, information, the divergence or mutual, informa mutual information measurement uh, later on I also made use of this. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. That's That was a very interesting talk. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chen. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 
I suppose we can wind it down, right? Yes, yeah, sir. It seems that I way. So. Got another one <laughs> sorry, coming. Sorry. I don't know the meaning of it. Lower. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us for our virtual DPHS seminar. Thank you, Dr. Raw. Um, thank everyone you. have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Dr. Moore.